On the breakfast this morning, an estimated 151,000 people will be diagnosed with the highly preventable disease called colon. We talk extensively of colon cancer, signs and symptoms, symptoms and treatment with a medical practitioner. We take a look at the ruling of the Federal High Court in Abuja by Justice Taiwo Taiwo sacking 20 lawmakers for defecting from the PDP to the APC in Crossing the State. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's national dailies, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Very good morning to you. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday morning, reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Allen, Lagos. I am Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bokwo. It's good to be back on your screen this beautiful Tuesday morning. As always, we start off the conversation with the top trending. And this morning, we head straight to uh, the university where you had uh, some residents and citizens of uh, LIFA actually protesting the fact that the choice of not having an indigent as the VC, VC of um, the university in Obafemi Awolu, where you can see that. And some people are saying that you have a traditionalist and you also have, um, because I mean, looking at, if you could probably, I'm sure if we were able to put up the audio, you would hear uh, some of the uh, chanting that's still going on. Uh, traditionalists and indigents at the campus of the Obafemi Awolowo University over the non-appointment of their townsman as vice-chancellor. Uh, so that's been getting a lot of people reacting and it's been getting a lot of persons, you know, talking about it. But if you uh, look at the situation, uh, the truth is the vice-chancellor that has been appointed is from Oshun State and that's it. And you also have uh, the fact that the university is also in Oshun State. There's a lot, uh, you know, to this particular issue. But Kofi, what are your thoughts on this one as we progress? Y yes, indeed. Uh, these are uh, uh, Ife indigents, and um, uh, the Obafemi Awolo University is located in, Il in Ilefe. Uh, it was a bit bizarre because you could see uh, indigents of the host community of university clad in their uh, traditional attire of white, white. Um, when you hear the name Ife, uh, you know, of course, they have a very um, uh, uh, revered, could I say, um, deity, you know. Um, and uh, so it was a bit uh, uh, bizarre and strange to see them coming out in, in white, white, you know. Um, but of course, the issue should be the, the subject of, of, of focus. And um, uh, this, this clamor for having uh, an indigent as a vice chancellor is not on loan to Nigerian universities. I mean, I've seen some people, uh, you know, comment online to say, you know, what uh, uh, isn't OAU a federal university again? Um, but we know that around around the country, um, federal universities have traditionally appointed um, at least indigents of the state as vice chancellor, and that's been the the practice all along. Um, I mean, I've taken a cursory look at the the history of uh, uh, the vice chancellors of Obafemi Awolowo University from 1962 to uh, the present, um, you know, the, the present or immediate past VC, who wasn't yet handed over, I believe, uh, he, he, he was appointed in 2017. Um, but of all the names that have been there, uh, there's only one that I have noticed, it seems he's not even from the Southwest. I'm talking about uh, Cyril Agodi Onwumechili, who was appointed as a VC or Vice Chancellor of OAU in 1979, he is tenant labs in 1982, where he handed over. And um, so, this is, this is where we find ourselves as a country today. Um, that even for a federal uh, institution like a university, which is meant to be the citadel of learning, um, citadel of everything of, uh, that that should encapsulate or be a utopian society, we're having uh, these interests play out. Um, but of course, this is Nigeria, like Falls the Badman said. Well, um, the issue with you know having a vice chancellor in a university is usually not on the platter of gold. I mean, it's not something that has been handpicked and you're being given. So you have candidates contesting. According to reports, you had like 16 candidates or thereabout uh, contesting. And so yeah. um, the selection board actually examined the people who actually submitted their, um, you know, their credentials for this particular post. They were, whether you were nominated or you submitted your, con uh, you know, your credentials. At the end of the day, you had a board who actually examined the 
um, you know, the credentials of this candidate. Yeah, interacted 19, with them sorry, not 12, and, 19. And, and scored them according to, you know, the stipulated criteria. At the end of the day, you had three highest scoring candidates which were presented to the council and, you know, for further consideration, which is provided by the law. Now, the entire exercise, because on the other hand, you would want to say maybe this is also an issue of the fact that the people do not understand, and we constantly want to hold to the issue of nepotism, because that has been part, you know, of our culture. Whether or not we want to agree, it's very dominant. So the entire exercise at the end of the day that led to the selection of Professor Adebayo Bamire, uh, who is now the Vice Chancellor, it was not like he was just single-handedly picked that's number one. The exercise had, you know, the joint selection board, which witnessed the representation of the federal, you know, you also had the representative of the Federal Character Commission, who confirmed that the exercise was fair and transparent and carried out. So, um, becoming a vice chancellor in a university is not an issue of, you know, chunking out, I mean, just giving it to whoever should get it. If you even want to even get to that point, there's, there's a criteria. It's based on merit. It's not based on you, the fact that you're my family member, the fact that you're from my lineage, or the fact that, you know, you're my neighbor or you're my sister. People actually contested or, they, you know, they had to screen persons for this particular position. At the end of the day, um, those who probably would have been from there, maybe the next time you have some person saying, okay, let's have 10 people from Elif, uh, you know, contesting. So out of the 10, I mean, somebody must make it, you know, to number one or number, I mean, number one, that's what we would say. So if 10 people are coming from there. But it just shows us um, what is constantly ongoing in our system and, you know, the kind of uh, system that we have. Everything was actually fair. It was based on, you know, the laid down standards and rule. And, but let's even begin to look at the sentiment. If you look at, the, you know, the founder, Obafemi Awolowo himself. Obafemi Awolowo himself is from, you know, the now called Oshun State, Ikene. And if he wanted to go by the sentiment, I'm not sure he probably would have, you know, had the idea of having the university, you know, where it is right now. Even Ogun State, I beg your pardon. Uh, you also want to talk about, um, uh, what's his name again? Akintola. Ladikwa Kintola, if I'm not mistaken as well. The point is we can't continue like this and hope to have a different result. The issue of nepotism and tribalism has been very big on us. And, you know, this is really, really sad to see that. The current VC of the university, because I was thinking when I saw the story, I thought he was from Cross River State or Akwaibum State. And then, you know, you look at it, he's still from the Southwest. So what's the fuse, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, yeah. especially in a system v where it's based on merit? Very in interesting, in in important point you've raised that, um, you know, the, the, uh, the individual who was um, um, uh, in charge of uh, the, the Southwest at the time, uh, when Nigeria was divided on a regional basis, um, and when that university was founded, it's not even in the indigen of Ife, you know, uh, but he, he situated it there. Uh, that's a very important point that we ought to know. I mean, the, this is not the first time the, 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 the protest has held. And uh, we hear that they went with some ritual items, you know, uh, and uh, some of these uh, uh, deities, you know, chanting praises to the Ocean River Goddess. And this is what uh, scared some people away. In fact, students were are scared as we're talking. The Students' Union government has told the um, institution to be shut down until you know uh, they can sort the matter out. So it, it's really, really sad. Um, we're also hearing that uh, the protesters allegedly uh, manhandled some security men at the gate, though they're saying they were shouting and saying they're coming in peace, they're not violent and all that. But um, this is this is what, what we have in a country where you know uh, we, we're very divided. You know, very you, you you have That's to apply for something you're applying on basis of um, your state of origin it's being it's being written on your 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 form if you feel a form you know your state of origin and all that um all nigerians need to be seen as nigerians i think it was a Bubakar who had been shouting and saying that if he becomes president he would like to abolish this thing called state of origin mm. and i think all the other candidates should think about it very importantly very i mean let's get back to nigeria where you can come from cross river state amen and be the <laughs> governor uh, be the governor of uh, river state you can come from um, Abia State and be the governor of Lagos State. You know, I know it doesn't. It's 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 um, utopian, all right. It's it's something that is so ideal, but may not be realistic today. But we can start taking no, steps, but, taking mm. steps towards that. And and it's very important to know that twenty persons applied for uh, this position. Out of the, those twenty people, sixteen applicants were shortlisted, and so it was a rigorous process. Like you said, it wasn't just like uh, the professor Bamire was just handpicked and they said, you know, take it. No. You know, but I think we, we began 
at a point began to lead ourselves down this path. When um, we began to see appointments of vice chancellors into, uh, you know, universities uh, of universities from states um, uh, where these universities are situated, for instance, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an alumnus of the um, University of Calabar, um, like you are, Mercy, uh, and um, I don't remember the last time that uh, a non-Indigen was appointed as a <laughs> as vice chancellor of the University of Calabar in my time and even while I've been monitoring. I mean, you go to some states like Cross River State, the current chief judge of the state, it was an issue, you know. You go to River State, they've had issues. You go to Lagos State, well, Lagos State is a bit ahead because they've, they've had appointments of commissioners, especially during fashion last time, and from other parts of the country as, a, as, commi uh, you know, as, as commissioners. So these are things that we need to grow beyond, move beyond. But also, we might not be fair if we also try to not understand the point of the e fair uh, citizens. Uh, yeah. But we will look at this as, as no, developments. But, you so know, forth. when you want to talk but, about. But please, they, they shouldn't be going with, with the rituals and the. Ju ju just and before please, we move on, I mean, when you, shrine, when you begin you know, to talk please. about what's this fair here now, we begin to tilt towards that. I mean, it's just simple. So I have said that if paraventral, it's that they begin to look at. Because at the end of the day, this person is also from Oshun State. That's what it is, right? So um, you, you, if you want to begin to look at it, then maybe you say. Uh, if you really want your own to be represented, it's like having people from different local governments in Corso. Currently, you have the vice chancellor from, um, you know, maybe Buki or thereabouts, who's, uh, you know, chancellor of the university, some part, one local government. Then you begin to push maybe like 10 candidates there. So out of 10, it's under prob probability. So out of 10, one should make it you know, to, to, to number yeah. one, and yeah. that's what it should be. Yes. Because there's a criteria for it. It's not hand-picked. It's not something that you just have to chunk out. But that's what it is. We hope that we understand that the fact that we're still, uh, I mean, one of the major problems that we're faced with as a country is that we're constantly divided. Every day, the question is, where are you? I mean, it's not that are you a Nigerian. It's where are you from? What state are you from? What tribe are you from? And that has constantly divided us. And that has constantly made us have, you know, not having the right people, you know, in the right position. But let's see how things pan out as we move in this democracy. All right, let, let's move on to our next trending yeah, story. Of course, uh, this is one, of course, it's always uh, very sad whenever something like this happened. Uh, a Chinese uh, a passenger plane, airplane, with about 100, with 132 people on board. Uh, it's a Boeing 737 crashing in southern China into the mountains uh, in a place called Guangxi. Guangxi province is in southern China. Uh, I've seen the video of the, 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 the plane crash. The air, aircraft was diving at an angle of about 35 degrees. And uh, the video, the footage was caught by someone who was in the vicinity who had a dash cam, a car dash cam, and used that dash cam to, to capture the footage. It's really, really heartbreaking. And this is China Eastern Airlines. It's a Boeing 737-800. Um, and it was flying from uh, Kunming to Guangzhou when it plunged down to the earth in Guangxi province. It caught fire. Uh, and of course, um, uh, the number of casualties and the reason for the crash are not yet known. But according to sources, uh, we're hearing that there are no signs of survivors. The rescuers are saying there are no signs of survivors. Um, it, you hardly hear, you hear of air crashes, you know, and air mishaps in China. So it, it has been taken that Chinese airlines generally have airlines, rather, generally have a, a, a good safety record. And the last major incident took place 12 years ago. So that's how it's been in China. Um, it, it's caused shock, we're hearing it's caused shock in China. Uh, President Xi Jinping, we're hearing also, has ordered an immediate investigating investigation uh, to determine the cause. And um, the airline, China Eastern Airlines, has grounded all its Boeing 737-800s. You can see the fire there, and of course, the rescue workers uh, at the site. It's uh, it's really sad. Um, uh, more than 600 emergency responders are said to have, to be at a crash site. Uh, firefighters also reached the scene and they managed to extinguish the blaze uh, in the hills caused by the crash. Uh, apart from the dash cam, car dash cam, also we have footage taken by local villagers, some of which you've seen uh, on your screen, and that was shared on Chinese social media. Uh, it's really, really sad indeed. Uh, we, we pray for, for the souls of those who have departed. We pray uh, for the families affected as well, and our thoughts and our hearts are with them. Well, very unfortunate, and our prayers will continue to be with those who have lost their lives. But, uh, you know, the Boeing uh, 737 has actually been called out again, and some people are saying, oh, you know, the, it's actually not very strange. It feels to be very common, you know, with the Boeing. And uh, there are a lot, a lot of speculations, a lot of, you know, 
uh, conspiracy theories that are being put out, but the truth is we would actually um, request that we allow investigation to continue. Um, let the black box, black box be found as soon as the black box is found. Then, you know, it would help the, um, what's it called again, investigation. It would actually help in identifying what actually went wrong and what really happened that, you know, you had that plane crash. I would just think that it's quite early. Uh, yes, we understand that there might be antecedent, but it might just be really, really be too early for us to begin to put out, you know, what could necessarily cause it. Because some people are saying it's actually carelessness on the part of, you know, the Boeing 737. We already have you know some kind of history but the fingers yeah. across them but, but, really but, but, but has, has said they already reached out to the american authorities mm -hmm. with view to see how they can facilitate a, 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 um, an interaction with the chinese authorities um you know china would not naturally want to take care of this themselves mm -hmm, you know but let's see how it goes um and that's so much we can take on our top trending segment right here on the breakfast when we come back we have uh, a look and analysis of the headlines on front pages of the national dailies we call it af the press. Please stay with us.